you are now a Wiccan, as much as any other person, whether initiated into a coven or not. Although we don't know the exact formats used by the witches of old, it's certain that centuries ago, many of them, living far from any village or coven, followed the same sort of procedure in dedicating themselves to the gods in whom they believed. Universally, whether we're talking about initiation into the ancient Greek mysteries, the modern Wicca, Australian Aboriginal puberty rites, African rites, Haitian voodoo initiation, Amerindian rites of passage, Egyptian mysteries, or, or whatever, they all follow the same pattern. There is, first of all, a separation of the initiate from the ordinary people. This is followed by a cleansing, or catharsis, and then a symbolical death. From there, new knowledge is gained, leading to the rebirth. Wiccan initiation follows the same pattern. For some, the entry into the circle can be frightening. Are you certain you want to continue? This may well be the very first time he has been there for an actual ritual. Standing there on the threshold with a very stern-faced young lady pointing a sword at him and asking if he really does want to go through with it. He may well then and there change his mind. But after all the study, and if his heart is true, it's doubtful that he will. He's therefore bound and blindfolded and led into the circle. The blindfolding and binding are symbolic of the darkness and restriction of the womb prior to birth. And this again is found universally. In some traditions, the symbolic death takes the form of a ritual scourging or similar, though this is not so in all Wiccan traditions. Also, some traditions demand an oath of secrecy. The so-called secrets usually being the names used for the deities and the methods of working magic. Once this has been taken, the blindfold can be removed and the initiate is instructed in the use of the working tools. This is the new knowledge. He receives his new name, the name by which he will from then on be known within the circle. If you are starting a coven from scratch, I would suggest that those delegated as priest and priestess each do the rite of self-dedication and then perform the initiation ritual for each of the other coven members. Once again, here we find the male to female, female to male insistence. Generally speaking, the priest will initiate the women and the priestess the men. There is little more to cover in the basics of Wicca. One thing I have not dwelt upon is the Book of Shadows. This is the book containing the Wiccan rituals. I have seen some really beautifully made books with elaborate calligraphy used for the rituals. A word of caution though, don't make the writing so elaborate that no one can read it in the circle. The tools you use, a thami, sword, wand if you want one, must be consecrated after you've made them and before you use them. This consecration need only be done once and does not apply to such things as candles, censer, goblets. It is just for the working tools. It is simply a basic sprinkling with the salted water and sensing. In my book, Buckland's Complete Book of Witchcraft, I include rituals for all possible occasions, including the Sabbaths, Esbats, new and full moons, marriage, hand fasting, birth and death. If you decide to write some rituals of your own, and I do encourage you to do so, then write them to include words and actions for as many coven members as possible. A coven is a close family type group. Wicca is a religion of participation, so let everyone participate. Do cast the circle, do consecrate it, do invite the gods to join you. I have spoken of the belief in a god and a goddess. I might add that most Wiccans include representations of these deities in their altar arrangements and also have them as religious figures in their homes. Some symbolize the deities with perhaps a seashell for the lady and an antler for the Lord. But however you view them, all Wiccans feel very strongly towards their god and goddess and enjoy a closeness with them known only by the very devout of other religions. Along with this belief in the duality of deity is a belief in reincarnation. 
This is an ancient belief, not exclusive to Wicca, of course. In fact, it was a tenet of Christianity up until the Second Council of Constantinople in 553 AD. I have spoken about the one Wiccan law, and it harm none, do what thou wilt. There is a corollary to this, it's, and it is a belief in retribution in this life. Rather than waiting till we die to get our rewards and punishments, being able to put them off, we get them right here in this life according to how we live it. And it's a threefold retribution. Do good, and you get back three times the good. But do harm, and that too will return threefold. So, within the Wiccan belief, there is no inducement to do harm. I hope I have been able to give you a clearer picture of Wicca through this treatment. Due to time limitations, I have only been able to touch briefly on the basics. There is, of course, far more to the old religion. I encourage you to read and to investigate. Wiccans do not proselytize, but we do want to straighten the long-held misconceptions. I hope I have managed to do a little of that here. I am Raymond Buckland. Blessed be. Yeah.